What's up, writers? Today, we're going to take a look back at some of the work we did with our Three Little Pigs essay, and we're going to try to grow big ideas from the details that we have about characters. Let's go. Students, in order to do exactly what we just said we we're going to do today, we need to go back and look at a text that we all know, and would you believe it? That means we're going to take a look at Raymond's Run. We're going to take a look at our main character, the protagonist. Big word. I know. You can handle it. So we're going to take a look at our protagonist, Squeaky, and we're going to see a couple steps that we should take in trying to decide a claim that we can make about our character. So the first step is we're gonna reread selected bits. Then we're gonna notice details, think, talk, and write to explore. Asking the question, why this detail? Why did the author include this? So that means first we need to reread a part. And that part can't just be any random part. It needs to be a part that really shows the character that we're writing about. Right now, take a look at the screen with me or at your own copy so that we can underline parts of the text or write down parts of the text that we think really show us something about our character. We are trying to learn about the main character. I'm gonna start reading. But now, if anyone has anything to say to Raymond, anything about his big head, they have to come by me. And I don't play the dozens or believe in standing around with somebody in my face doing a bit of talking. I'd much rather just knock you down and take my chances, even if I am a little girl with skinny arms and a squeaky voice, which is how I got the name, Squeaky. I bet you already have some parts underlined. Don't you? Did some of you underline the phrase, I'd rather just knock you down? I know I thought it said a lot. I know another part where she says, if anybody has anything to say about Raymond, they have to come by me. That part's probably significant too. But I think that this line is even stronger. Okay, so while both of these are important, we're gonna focus on the one where she knocks them down because it doesn't seem like an accident. It seems intentional. And when we find these little details, these small details, we need to turn them into big ideas. And we do that by considering these thought prompts on the screen right here. So we're not actually gonna write yet to think. We're gonna imagine we're writing and think about these small details and turn them into bigger ideas. And they're gonna help us to figure out why did the author include that detail? So if I'm thinking about this, you know, I notice that when people say mean things about Raymond Squeaky you know, reacts. She reacts by saying, I'd much rather just knock you down. Quotes. I wonder, I wonder why the author, Bambera, that's their last name, included this detail about Squeaky, that she just wants to knock people down. Maybe the author wants to show us that Squeaky's really, really angry over how people treat her brother. On the other hand, perhaps the author, Bambera, they're really showing us that Squeaky loves Raymond. She loves him so much that she's, you know, willing to fight for him. Or could it be that the author, Bambera, is trying to show that Squeaky thinks it's better to fight than to use words? And, you know, kind of talk through stuff? Writers, did you notice how, as I was thinking about that text, I did the work that we need to do as a literary essayist, a person who writes essays about literature or books. I reread the passage. I paused when I found a fine detail about the character that, you know, is worth thinking about. 
And then you watched me think. You watched me think and I asked some questions such as, why might the author have included this? And at that point, since I was speculating, I was guessing at why the author felt that way, I used the word maybe. And I used, on the other hand, perhaps, because I'm not sure. I'm kind of guessing at why the author felt this way, and I'm guessing in multiple ways. And those words keep helping me write. They keep helping me think. Here's the deal. If we hadn't been planning to write this essay, we wouldn't have stopped there. We would have zoomed past it. We wouldn't have noticed. It would have been another part of the story. And I bet that when we read this before, you zoomed right past it. However, as people who are writing a literary essay, it's our job to stop and consider. Consider why the author made the choice because they're making a deliberate, on purpose choices. And it's your job as an essayist, someone who's writing an essay, to take notice. Okay. In your part of the story, the next part that comes up that starts with, and if things get too rough, you're going to start reading there, and you're going to read up until I'm the swiftest thing in the neighborhood. You're going to read that section, and as you read, underline parts that you notice tell us something about our character. And you're going to do this at your table groups. So one person is going to read aloud, and the other two are going to be pausing to underline as the other person reads. If after trying for a minute or so, you don't find any details worth discussing, reread and find one now. Remember, when you find details, stop, and on your piece of paper, your assignment today, I need you to practice jotting. Jotting about your detail you notice to grow it into a bigger idea. And so you'll need to use those thought prompts that we had on the board earlier and that are back up here right now. So right now we're gonna pause the video. Not surprisingly, I bet a lot of you, after noticing things about the outsides of our character, the external state, like maybe that she's a fast runner, I bet you got down to the important things, like what's going on inside our character, just like we've done in the past with stories like in our um, deeper study of character, like popularity. With the two Allens, we found character traits about that character. In the same way, I'm betting we found character traits about Squeaky, some of which we may not like. Like, she's kind of egotistical. And some there may be a little sad that she's lonely. That's the kind of thinking that's going to lead to a powerful essay. And that's the kind of writing that you need to do, the kind of thinking you need to do, to really explore your characters that you chose from your short stories. And so that's what you're going to do right now. You're going to grab those short stories, and you're going to start to do the things that are uh, on our chart for what literary essays do in order to write about a character. We are gonna reread selected bits. So you probably have an idea for where we might find more information. Hopefully you're not just rereading the whole story, although I guess if you don't remember anything, maybe you didn't read it super closely the first time and that would be okay. But we wanna make sure that we really take it a paragraph at a time. We really ask ourselves the question, what details from this part of the text Tell me more information about my character. What small details that might go unnoticed are we gonna be able to grow into bigger ideas using the thought prompts that we talked about earlier. Remember, these thought prompts are things like, maybe the author included this because, or on the other hand, perhaps, and, or it could be that, and finally, you might use the phrase, I wonder if. I know that if you use those thought prompts and if you're rereading bits of your story that you chose, you're going to fill up that assignment with all kinds of thoughts about your character to help us develop 
some traits we might be able to use when we make claims about our character because those are coming soon. And until I see you next time, happy writing.